All right, so what we're doing is we're looking at the conservation of energy lab and how you guys have to do a little work in it today. And hopefully you have some data recorded. And I copied some data from one of the students in another class here. And I just took their one set of trials. Uh, a number one, they only did three trials. Not cool. you got to do at least five trials. So you got these times that are very small times. But if you look in this set of trials, they're very consistent. That's a good thing. They've got the mass of their bob listed in kilograms that's so important they have the width of their bob listed in meters so important and now you got to do some calculations so you're going to come into the velocity here and to calculate your velocity you've got to set up a formula equals and if you recall we had the bob passing through a photo gate and that's what the time was we want to take the width of the bob which is your distance and we want to divide it by the time it took for the bob to go through just distance divided by time. That's all it is. It gives us a velocity. And it's 1.2 uh, meters per second. That's a very realistic time. Your velocities, and this is only from a 10 centimeter drop. Your velocities really should be uh, extremely close to that. They should be you know, 1 to 5 meters per second. If you go fat, bigger than 5 meters per second, you probably did something wrong or you're going from extremely high up. So once you do a formula, you come over and the cursor changes right here. See the cursor changed? Grab it, drag it down, it distributes a formula. Then it's time to talk energy. And let's go kinetic because we just did the velocity. Again, we're going to do an equals. And we're going to say 1 half times the mass of the bob times the uh, velocity of the bob squared. Close parenthesis. Um, so that, there's your energy. So there's a formula, and again, distribute it down, does it for you. Then we're going to want to do some nice simple potential energy. Equals mgh. Mass times 9.81 times the height. In this trial, it was 10 centimeters, so I'm going to manually put it in as 0.1. It is totally fine if you have it as a column in your data, ta in your data table. And so we got some data here. Drag that down. Now you'll notice while there's consistency amongst amongst the trial, there is some discrepancy here. Um, and what's happening is, if it's like this, my thinking is the height wasn't measured very precisely. That's what I'm thinking could be the problem with this trial. But you'll notice that it's still relatively close. It's maybe a quarter, you know, 25% off kind of deal. So let's do percent error here equals percent error we want to do um, percent difference it's not even so much percent error it's percent difference so potential energy minus kinetic energy divided by potential energy and of course then times 100 and 25 percent error uh, not great but could be a whole lot worse that's what you do, guys. That's what you do with this data. And the big thing you want to do, yesterday we talked in class about how energy was conserved. You want to go back into your background theory, and you want to add the conservation of energy into there. It's a big deal. And then you want to go into your, your discussion as well and talk about how the energy, I hope, is conserved as you look at your stuff. Um, Hopefully this works out. Replay this video. Go to my website and play the video. Search my YouTube channel for the video if you need help setting up your formulas. That's how this works. Okay? Uh, good luck with that.